I'm grateful, Allah the sustainer. For since I'm remorseful, Allah the forgiver. For blessings I'm hopeful, Allah the bestower. Gracious and merciful, Allah the creator. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم The subject today is one of the important subjects about the message of Islam and that is the stability and progression of Islam. First of all, it's important to uh, explain the, uh, the title uh, so that we know what is the matter we are discussing about Islam. Islam is stable. Stable means fixed religion. Fixed in the sense that you cannot add any new law or delete any new law from Islam. According to the well-known hadith, Halal Muhammadin Halal ila yawm al-qiyamah wa haram Muhammadin haram ila yawm al-qiyamah. Whatever has been made lawful by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his progeny, will remain lawful till end of judgment, till day of judgment. And whatever made unlawful will remain unlawful till the day of judgment. So Islam is very fixed religion. You cannot change any one of its rules and regulations. You cannot add, you cannot delete, you cannot change, you cannot uh, make um, new uh, ideas to come. Uh, so from that sense, it is very fixed. You cannot change it. But at the same time, we say Islam is suitable for a humanity at any time, in any place. I mean, the humanity, the human beings who were living 1,400 years before when Islam started, they have different rules and regulations and habits and, uh, and culture and ideas and civilization and so on. Uh, today, in the 21st century, for example, there are different uh, civilization and um, different ideas, different culture. So the question sometimes comes, how come Islam, which came to be suitable for the life 1,400 years before, is also suitable for our modern life with all the progress in civilization and development of human ideas and views and methods of living uh, which are used. So that question comes nowadays. Many people are asking about it. But at the same time, this answer is a proof that Islam is not a religion made by a human being who called Muhammad son of Abdullah because if a prophet Muhammad himself was not a prophet, he was ordinary human being, he could not have made such a law which is suitable for solution, for solving human problems at any time in any place. Impossible for uh, ideas of an ordinary person to cover all aspects of a human life everywhere. Even nowadays in our modern life, 
we see, let us say, the French law or American law or British law, the best law they write for the society. And after a few years, they said, well, these points are not correct, that issues are not. We have to make amendment. We have to change it here. We have to add there. We have to delete there, and so on. So every now and then, they change with it because they found it not suitable for the society. So how come religion suitable for the human being in, at any country, any society, whether in a rural area or in a, um, cities or in villages or in woods or in desert, wherever human being lives, that law is suitable for him and give an answer for all his uh, needs and solve all his problems. So naturally, such a vast religion cannot be made by ordinary human being. It has to be by a divine source. It has to be made by Almighty Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why this subject, we discuss it under Imam in prophethood. We say that by itself, it is a proof that Islam is religion of Allah and not a man-made religion. And the Prophet Muhammad is a real prophet of Allah and not an ordinary person, because such law cannot come from ordinary human being. Now let us study the secret behind that. Maybe somebody said, you are claiming Islam is suitable, but Islam is not suitable. For example, we have to study what is the secret behind that. How come Islam, which is very fixed religion, you cannot change, you cannot add to it, at, at the same time is flexible, which will meet needs of a humanity anywhere, any place. So how come that come, uh, happens? The answer is that, uh, first of all, Islam put a law and rules and regulations which are related to human nature and are not going into details of human civilization. What I mean, human nature, human being has a limited nature, uh, limited needs, let us say. Instincts are limited for every human being. Human being 1,400 years and a human being of today, they have the same nature, same human nature, the same psychology, the same physiology, the same anatomy, the same needs. These are fixed. At that time, he needs to eat. Well, nowadays also you need to eat. He needs to drink. Nowadays, he need to drink. He needs to uh, uh, shelter a house to live. Now he needs a shelter to live. He needs to marry, and nowadays he needs to marry. Uh, he needs to socialize with others, and nowadays he needs to socialize with others. He needs an economic law. Nowadays also he needs economic law. He needs a social law. Nowadays he needs a social law. He needs a political law relations between different countries. In those days, relations were needed, and nowadays also relations are needed. So the needs of a human being are fixed, not changing. What is changing are the means to fulfill those needs. What I mean, the means, we need food. Now we cook food on a fire made by burning the wood as 1,400 years before that is done, or we make it by a microwave or an oven with gas or electrical uh, gas cooker or electrical cooker, make no difference. You have to cook the food. Now you cook it in that way or in this way, make no difference. So Islam put the rules and regulations for the type of food you have to eat. How to cook it? will not discuss, up to you. You see, how to cook it is the civilization of the country. So we are civilized because before there were no um, gas cooker, for example, and they have to make a fire and put the meat on the um, fire and um, cook their food. Nowadays, we cook it in a different way. Okay, that is the type of cooking. But is the content of the food different? No. The same need for food and the same food. You need protein, you need carbohydrates, you need fat, you need vitamins. 
All that are needed, the same needs, 1,400 years before and today, and maybe after 1,000 or 10,000 years to come, the human nature is the same, is not changing. So Islam puts rules and regulations for that. For example, he said, you can eat every food, but the condition is that, that if it is meat, it has to be slaughtered in a proper way, halal meat. Certain food, like let us say the pig, is unlawful. Certain drinks, like let us say wine, is unlawful. Why? Because wine is harmful to the body. Well, a thousand years before, wine was harmful, and today, wine is harmful. And a thousand years to come, wine is harmful because it will remove the, the control of the brain. And naturally, when you have no control of your brain, you can commit any sin besides, well, medical effects of alcoholism, for example. So that Islam will not touch. You see, you can drink. Suppose the water you, you are drinking or juice you are drinking, let us say, is to be halal, not usurped from others is to be clean, purified, tahir, not najis, not contaminated with the blood or urine or stool or other najasa things, for example, and not to be, um, let us say, uh, intoxicant like wine or alcohol or different types of wine, you know, maybe previous times there is only one type of wine. Now there are different names, they call it whiskey or brandy or so many other names, but they are same intoxicants. So you put a general rule, intoxicants are banned. Now what type of intoxicant make no difference? All of them are bad. You say, well, this is a type has 10%, 5%, 15%, 30% alcohol. In each type is made in, in France, made in uh, Russia, made in America. Well, so intoxicant is intoxicant, wherever it is made. So it is harmful for the human being in Africa, as it is harmful for a human being in America, as it is harmful for the human being in China, will make no difference. So you see, the general rule is there. You have to protect yourself, I mean your body, you are responsible for health of your body. Now how you are responsible for health of your body? Well, to eat, let us say, proper food. Um, let us say simply proper food, which has let's say, protein, carbohydrate, fat, and, and vitamins and minerals. Now, how to mix the food, to make it vegetarian food only, because there are protein in some vegetarian diets, or to make it more with meat, or to put uh, carbohydrate more. You eat rice more like in Middle East or in China, or you eat meat, for example, more like in Europe, uh, and less rice, or whatever way, it is up to you to eat what you want. There is no restriction. How to cook your food is up to, up to you. What to add to it is up to you. You add whatever uh, taste you, you like and make no difference. You, you put pickles whatever way you like it, with pepper or without pepper or half pepper, it's up to you. As long as there is no Haram thing in this. For example, you are not allowed to add blood to it because the blood is najis. You cannot eat the blood, for example. The meat should be halal meat. That is all. Now, how to cook it? You cook it in the way you like. Make no difference. So you see the civilization, which are the means for fulfilling needs of the human being, there is no restriction about it. If you travel, you cannot travel. They give a fixed distance. For example, you say six farsakh, about 22 and a half kilometers going and 22 and a half coming, you are a traveler. Now you travel by walking, you travel by camel, you travel by horse, you travel by car, you travel by aeroplane, it's up to you. You travel by any way. As long as you cross that distance, you are a traveler. So your prayer is qasr. For example, the four rak'ats will be two rak'ats of a prayer. So you give you a law, and then by what way you are traveling, say, immaterial. You travel any way you want. As long as you are a traveler, you have been away of your hometown with this distance, then you are a traveler, so that the law is there. 
So you see the uh, philosophy of that, that when it touched the fixed part of a human being, fixed part means human nature. The rules and regulations are for that. The changing part of a human being, which is the civilization, there is no limitations. You have to cover your body, for example. I mean, for the women to cover their body or for the men to cover not all parts, well, head, neck, etc., is allowed, or let us say at least the private parts. That is the law. Now, what type of suit you are wearing? The Arabic dress or the um, uh, Western dress or the Chinese dress or the Indian dress or African dress, it's up to you. As long as you are dressed, I mean covering your, let us say, private parts or a woman covering her body, then it is okay. In what way to cover, it's up to you. You can choose any way you want to cover. There is no limit for it. As long as, let us say, it is not attractive colors with ordinary colors now, whether it is in African style or Chinese style or American style or Arabian style, make no difference. So there is no limitations there. They give you the general rules and regulations. You need to worship Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by certain practices. Like a prayer, you have to pray. Like fast, you have to fast to go once in life for pilgrimage, for example, and to pay religious duties, and so on. So these are important for every human being. Human being 1,400 years before, he needs to remember Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has to be in touch with Allah to pray five times daily. And a human being nowadays also is in need to remember Allah. Not that nowadays we do not need to remember Allah. It's not true. Maybe because of the challenges, we need to remember Allah more because there are more challenges and we have to control ourselves, not to deviate and not to go to the wrong side. So that type of what you call ibadat, worshiping Allah, all are same and needed for a human being those days and nowadays. We come to uh, another part, let us say, for marriage. Well, marriage, what type of ceremony to do? You go to a hotel, or you go to a restaurant, or you make it in a tent in the desert. You say, the type is up to you. As long as you are in link with the women through marriage contract, that is the main point, that you have to have a contract, and the contract should be known that you are a husband, she is a wife, not that you are friends, that friendship only will not allow relation, that if you are bound to that relation that as husband and wife, then you marry. Now you want to marry alone, you make a ceremony, and the ceremony you bring only rice and meat, you bring different types of cakes, you bring the sweet, you make different decoration, it's up to you. You do whatever you like. For that, there is no limit. You can do decoration as much as you like. Let us say within limit that not, no, there is no israf, no exceeding the limit to, because israf wastage is not allowed you know, in Islam. Wastage in any, anything, in food, in drink, anything wastage is not allowed. But within the usual limit, you can do it in the way you like. You build a mosque because a mosque in which, which means a place made waqf endowment to be a mosque for Allah. Now you build a mosque with mud or you build a mosque, a mosque with, uh, let us say, H beam and bricks or you build a mosque with cement and concrete and you build it with uh, marble and stone or you build it with ordinary brick, it's up to you. you. You build in the way you like whatever system. So the development of civilization, they say there is no limit, you do it. As long as you are limiting that this area is a mosque and the boundary are uh, having its own sanctity and then will be used, let us say, for prayers and religious activities. Okay. How to build it, there is no restriction in Islam. You build it in the way you like, make no difference. 
Because when we say there is development, development means in what? Okay, in the old days they used to live, let us say, in either tents in the desert or the houses, very simple house. From clay, they used to build their house, wood and clay, and that is simple house. Okay, now your house, you may build it with concrete and make a villa. Okay, make no difference. You need a shelter. Okay, that is a shelter. I say as long as the shelter, first of all, should not be usurped, the place. In those days, you cannot reserve, uh, usurp uh, uh, rights of others. And nowadays also, you cannot usurp house of others and build your own house if you have power or a government with you. Or, so a house which is usurped is not allowed. In those days and today. How to build it? Build it in the way you like, as you like. There is no restrictions. We come in the trade, for example, another example. Well, in those days, maybe their trade was simple. The money they used was only gold and silver coins. And what they sell and buy is, are very limited goods. There is no factories and there's no thousands of goods to be sold, you know. There are very limited things. Fine, but that is, after all, there is a business. So in the trade, there are rules and regulations that, first of all, you cannot cheat. You are not allowed to cheat. Secondly, he has the option to return it, let us say, within three days. If he buy something, he has the option to return it. It's a khayar al fasq. Um, thirdly, that the price should be fair. If it is, the price is not fair, then he is allowed to return it. If later on prove that, you have sold it very costly, for example, for him. And so on, it should be your own property, not to sell property of others. And, Similar things. You know, in those days and today, okay, you may have a supermarket with 20,000 items, fine, but it is after all buying and selling, you know, 20,000 or 10,000 or, or 20 types of items. It is buying and selling. Rules and regulations on 20 items and 20,000 items are the same. As long as you obey the rules and regulations, you can buy and sell anything. Of course, you cannot say, sell something which is like wine, blood, that's a haram thing that is different. Well, in those days and today, it's the same. Otherwise, you can buy and sell whatever you like within the rules and regulations of Islam. We come to agriculture, for example. In those days, agriculture was done by hand. The people did not have machines. Nowadays, they have tractors and machines. Fine. So the rules and regulations of agriculture are fixed. If you have a land and you cultivate it and you, as it's called, or to make it alive means you cultivate the land and the land is yours. Now, either you can cultivate a thousand meter in those days or now you can cultivate 10,000 meters or 20,000 meters. Okay, make no difference. You cultivate as much as you like. That is your right to use that land because you spend money and you brought tractors and then you could take care of this much land. Fine, maybe acres land. Fine, that is up to you. So what I mean, the general rules and regulations are the same. In those days, they used to cultivate, and nowadays, we need to cultivate. Okay, maybe their ability was a small. They cannot cultivate more than 1,000 or 2,000 meters, for example, for per person, uh, because he has no ability more than that. Now, because of machines, you may uh, have a higher ability, maybe 10, 20 acres per person, fine. But after all, cultivation is the same. You know. Inheritance, rules and regulations, well, the same. Inheritance in Islam is based on certain rules and regulations. How much the son will inherit, how much the daughter will inherit, how much the wife, the husband, the father, the mother, the brother, sister. There is a limit. Well, that relation in the old days and that relation today is the same. Make no difference. Matrimonial relations, women's right and men's right or husband's rights and wife's rights and um, rights and duties for um, uh, both the parents. So in those days, they were needed, and nowadays also needed. So Islam is fixed, but is still suitable for every part of the world because, as I said, one of the secrets is that Islam makes rules and regulations for the fixed part of a human beings, and that is a human nature. Whatever human needs are there, there are rules and regulations for it, and that will not change. Anywhere, 
you are the same human being. You have the same needs. You have the same uh, instincts you have to fulfill. Now, the other part, which is the civilization and development, that one is made open. There are general rules and regulations, but it is open. So that is one way to solve the problems of human beings. The other thing, in Islam, there are also general rules and regulations where at certain places when uh, it is impossible to apply uh, what is called al-anwan al-awali, the first rule, they say by a secondary rule, you can change the rule at certain positions. For example, um, you say, la zarar wa la zarar, if there is no harm and no harming to others. This is general rule. That harming might come in business, harming might come from neighbor, harming might come in the street. You cannot harm others. Now, how to harm them anyway? Harming anyway is not allowed. If you harm your body, you are not allowed. Say, I'm not harming others, I'm harming my body. I want to attempt suicide. You say, no, you are not allowed. You cannot harm your body. You cannot harm others. In what way you harm? Well, anyway to abuse or to insult or to create a problem or your uh, wall is threatening your neighbor because it might fall or in any way of harming is not allowed. So there is a general rule here can apply. The necessary situations or emergency situations will make the unlawful lawful. Like you say, drinking wine is unlawful, but if I am in a desert and there is no water and I will die of thirst and I have only a bottle of wine, so am I allowed to drink in that situation? You say yes, because you should not die, you drink it. Well, it has some water in it. Okay, you drink it, you remain alive till you reach somewhere where there is water and you stop that. So here, because this is necessary. If you need a certain medicine, and that is medicine is life-saving. And in that medicine, there is little alcohol, for example. And there is no other alternative. So you say you are allowed to use that medicine, though there is alcohol in it, because it is a life-saving. This is here is an emergency situation, or what you call necessary situation, not ordinary situation. The man is not allowed to look or touch the women. That is a rule. But if a male doctor has to do operation for a female patient, and sometimes he needs to touch or to see her abdomen for operation or her chest for heart surgery, for example, so it is allowed because it is emergency. And so on in anywhere in your life, when you reach a situation where you cannot afford it except to, uh, well, exceed the limit or exceed the halal, you say, if it is very necessary, let us say, emergency, and you cannot avoid that situation, critical situation, then the unlawful become lawful. So you see, again, that is a general rule which will help you anywhere in your life. You can't say that I was in a place where emergency was there and the rules and regulations of Islam were not solving my problem, so I have to die because I had nothing in the desert except wine and, well, drinking wine is not allowed and there is no water, so I will die. Islam said, no, you should not die. Here is emergency situation, you can drink wine and save yourself, but then when you reach water, you stop it. Simple as that. So wherever emergency situation is there, Islam said there is a solution that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allowed you to uh, use whatever possible means to overcome the emergency situation. And when you are in a normal way, then you practice normally. So that is uh, another, let us say, general rules and regulation. Well, there is a, um, uh, another general law, for example, in Islam, uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ask the people to do something that they cannot do it. 
ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به. You see, something I cannot do. Let us say, prayer, because of emergency, I am at a certain stage, I cannot pray. Maybe I am unconscious, for example, in operation. You say, okay, you don't pray if you are unconscious. We will not say that you did haram because you did, were not praying and you are unconscious. This is not haram. I cannot pray while standing because I am sick. And well, it is ob obligatory to pray standing, for example, and go for ruku and sujood. That is obligatory act. Say, no, I cannot. You say, okay, if you cannot, it is not obligatory for you now. If you can pray while sitting, you pray while sitting. Even while sitting, I cannot. I am sleeping in bed because of surgery, for example. I cannot sit. So, okay, while sitting, you pray. I cannot perform wudu. Water is harmful for my body. So, okay, don't perform wudu. You perform tayammum. Tayammum is instead of wudu. Wudu is harmful. So, what I mean, Allah is not asking you to do something that you cannot afford to do it. If you cannot, it is not obligatory. If you can do it, fine. Do your religious. If you cannot, you are not asked to do it. Sometimes, well, if you are sleepy, you will not be questioned. If you slept in the afternoon and said, I will awake for my Asr prayer, and your sleep continued till Maghrib, Allah will not question you. Okay, if you make sure to say it, you put the, the clock, for example, to ring somebody, that's okay, but suppose you were very tired and you did not awake. You say it's not haram because Allah will not question somebody who was sleepy. Yes, if you are awake, you will be questioned that why you did not offer your prayer. But if you were sleepy, sleeping, you will not be questioned. So you see, there are certain other rules and regulations in Islam which make Islam so flexible that it is progressive and will fit needs of a human beings any place, anywhere in the world. Beside the other fact is that Islamic rules and regulations are so vast that they will cover all aspects of a human life. I mean, not only religious rules are to pray and fast. No. There is a details about economic law, about a trade, about agriculture, about contracts with people, about oath, well, about the personal laws which cover marriage, divorce, inheritance, etc. personal laws. There are details about types of food and drink which are lawful and lawful. A lot of details are there. Besides, there is a detailed economic system for the society, detailed law of economy. In the modern life, you need banking, and in the old days, there were no banks. Well, there are a lot of details about Islamic banking. You can do banking in Islamic way, no problem. You just omit the interest part, and you can deal with the bank in a share base rather than interest and the banking will, will run and it will be profitable. Bank as well, depending on share, you know, rather than uh, share or partnership. There are some details uh, and you can run the bank system with it, you know, very easy. Economic system is there. They say, well, political systems and the contracts among the countries are different nowadays. The political relations between countries differ than Political relations a thousand years before, yeah. But still for all the new political relations with other countries, let us say with Muslim countries or non-Muslim countries, there are detailed rules and regulations. Well, the government at time of the Prophet was in hand of the Prophet. Now, what about after the Prophet? You say there is a rule and regulation. There, are, there is a vicegerent for the Prophet, let us say the 12 Imams, salam Allah alayhi. Okay, nowadays our 12 Imam is in occultation. What is the system of government? Is it still there is a system? The Imam themselves said in the, process, in, in the time of occultation, there is a new rules and regulations and you have to ful fulfill to ask the ulama and the, uh, f follow a marja, do taqlid of the highest religious authority and then 
They will give you the details of Ahkam and so on. So what I mean, you will not find any religion which covers all aspects of life. You found certain religion and say, okay, about intuition and thinking and worshiping and that is only about that. Okay, cool. What about other social aspects, political aspects, economic aspects, moral aspects? Say, no, maybe little moral values, but not even details of that. In Islam, you find very detailed moral values and moral rules and regulations and so on. So you see, Islam covers all life. That is why it is the final religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mankind. It is vast, covers all aspects of a humanity, not only in that time, but for thousands of years to come, Islam can solve the problems. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the final religion for mankind, final revelation for human beings with that details. So this is in short about Islam. So what I mean, such religion made so vast, so great, so complete, and so fixed, but still will meet needs of a humanity any place, anywhere, at any time, in whatever life they are living, whatever situation they are facing, uh, really is not possible to be made by an ordinary human being who lived in an ignorant era, uh, the area of Jahiliya, where people are only idol worshippers and fighting and killing each other and having a tribal life and there is no such detailed system. So from where Muhammad got these if it is not from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Naturally, not possible. So that is proof that what he says is right, that he is the messenger of Allah and this is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mankind. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajjal farajahum.